Day 3. What drives your life? I observed that the basic motive for success is the driving force of envy and jealousy. Ecclesiastes 4.4 The man without a purpose is like a ship without a ruler, or, or rather a wave, a nothing or no man, Thomas Carlyle. Everyone's life is driven by something. Most dictionaries define the verb drive as to guide, to control or to direct. Whether you are driving a car, a nail or a golf ball, you are guiding, controlling and directing it at that moment. What is the driving force in your life? Right now, you may be driven by a problem, a pressure or a deadline. You may be driven by a painful memory, a haunting fear or an unconscious belief. There are hundreds of circumstances, values and emotions that can drive your life. Here are five of the most common ones. Many people are driven by guilt. They spend their entire lives running from regrets and hiding their shame. Guilt-driven people are manipulated by memories. They allow their past to control their future. They often unconsciously punish themselves by sabotaging their own success. When Cain sinned, his guilt disconnected him from God's presence and God said, You'll be a restless wanderer on this earth. That describes most people today, wandering through life without a purpose. We are products of our past, but we don't have to be a prisoner of it. God's purpose is not limited by your past. He turned a murderer named Moses into a leader and a coward named Gideon into a courageous hero. And he can do amazing things with your rest of your life too. God specializes in giving people a fresh start. The Bible says, what happened is for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. Many people are driven by resentment and anger. They hold on to hearts and never get over them. Instead of releasing their pain through forgiveness, they rehearse it over and over in their minds. Some resentment-driven people clam up and internalize their anger, while others blow up and explode it onto others. Both responses are unhealthy and unhelpful. Resentment always hurts you more than it does the person you resent. While your offender has probably forgotten the offense and gone on with life, you continue to stew in your pain, perpetuating the past. Listen, those who have hurt you in the past cannot continue to hurt you now unless you hold on to the pain through resentment. Your past is past. Nothing will change it. You are only hurting yourself with bitterness for your own sake. Learn from it and then let it go. The Bible says, To worry yourself today to the resentment will be a foolish, senseless thing to do. Many people are driven by fear. Their fears may be a result of a traumatic experience, unrealistic expectations, growing up in a high control home, or even genetic predispositions. Regardless of the cause, fear-driven people often miss great opportunities because they are afraid to venture out. Instead, they play it safe, avoiding risks and trying to maintain the status quo. Fear is a self-imposed prison that will keep you from becoming what God intends for you to be. You must move against it with the weapons of faith and love. The Bible says, well-formed love banishes fear. Since fear is crippling, our fearful life, fear of faith, fear of judgment is one not yet fully formed in love. Many people are driven by materialism. The desires acquired becomes the whole goal of their lives. Their drive to always want more is based on the misconception that having more will make me more happy, more important, more secure. But all three ideas are untrue. Possessions only provide temporary happiness. Because things do not change, we eventually become bored with them and they want newer, bigger, better versions. It's also a myth that if I get more, I'll be more important. Self-worth and net worth are not the same. Your value is not determined by your valuables. And God says the most valuable things in life are not things. The most common myth about money is that having more will make me more secure. It won't. Wealth can be lost instantly through a variety of uncontrollable factors. Real security can only be found in that which can never be taken from you, your relationship with God. Many people are driven by the need for approval. They allow the expectation of parents or spouse or children or teachers or friends to control their lives. Many adults are still trying to earn the approval of unpleasable parents. 
Others are driven by peer pressure, always worried by what others might think. Unfortunately, those who follow the crowd usually get lost in it. I don't know all the keys to success, but one key to failure is to try to please everyone. Being controlled by the opinions of others is a guaranteed way to miss God's purpose for your life. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. There are other forces that can drive your life, but all lead to the same dead end. Unused potential, unnecessary stress, and unfulfilled life. This 40-day journey will show you how to live a purpose-driven life, a life guided, controlled, and directed by God's purpose. Nothing matters more than knowing God's purpose for your life, and nothing can compensate for not knowing them, not success, wealth, fame, or pleasure. Without a purpose, life is motion without meaning, activity without direction, and even without reason. Without a purpose, life is trivial, petty, and pointless. The Benefits of Purpose-Driven Living There are five great benefits of living a purpose-driven life. Knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. We were made to have meaning. This is why people try diverse methods like astrology or physics to discover it. When life has meaning, you can bear almost anything. Without it, nothing is bearable. A young man in his 20 wrote, I feel like a failure because I'm struggling to become something and I don't even know what it is. All I know how to do is to get by. Someday if I discover my purpose, I feel I'm beginning to live. Without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. In the Bible, many different people express this hopelessness. Isaiah complained, I have labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Job said, my life drags by day after day, hopeless day. And I give up. I'm tired of living. Leave me alone. My life makes no sense. The greatest tragedy is not death but life without purpose. Hope is an essential to your life as air and water. You need to cope. Hope to cope. Dr. Bernie Siegel found he could predict which of his cancer patients will go into remission by asking, Do you want to live to be 100? Those with a deep sense of life purpose answer yes and were the ones most likely to survive. Hope comes from having a purpose. If you have felt hopeless, hold on. Wonderful changes are going to happen in your life as you begin to live it in a purpose. God says, I know what I'm planning for you. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you a hope and a good future. You may feel you are facing an impossible situation, but the Bible says, God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Knowing your purpose simplifies your life. It defines what you do and what you don't do. Your purpose becomes the standard you use to evaluate which activities are essential and which are not. You simply ask, does this activity help me fulfill one of the God's purpose for my life? Without a clear purpose, you have no foundation on which you base decisions, allocate your time, and use your resource. You will tend to make choice based on circumstances, pressures, and your mood at that moment. People who don't know their purpose try to do too much and that causes stress, fatigue, and conflict. It is impossible to do everything people want you to do. You have just enough time to do God's will. If you can't get it all done, it means you are trying to do more than God intended for you to do. Or possibly that you are watching too much television. Purpose-driven living leads to a simpler lifestyle and a sinner's schedule. The Bible says, a pretentious, soy life is an empty life. A plain and simple life is a full life. It also leads to... Peace of mind. You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Knowing your purpose focuses your life. It concentrates your effort and energy on what's important. You become effective by being selective. It's human nature to get distracted by minor issues. We play tribal pursuit with our lives. Henry David Thoreau observed that people's life lives of quiet desperation, but today a better description is endless distraction. Many people are like gyroscopes spinning around at a frantic pace but never going anywhere. Without a clear purpose, you will keep changing directions, job, relationship, church, or other externals, hoping each Change will settle the confusion or fill the emptiness in your heart. You think maybe this time it will be different, but it doesn't solve your real problem. A lack of focus and purpose. The Bible says, 
Don't live carelessly, unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. The power of focusing can be seen in light. Diffuse light has little power or impact, but you can concentrate its energy by focusing it. With a magnifying glass, the rays of the sun can be focused to set grass or paper on fire. When light is focused, even more as a laser beam, it can cut through still. There is nothing quite as potent as a focused life. One lived on purpose. The men and women who have made the greatest difference in history were the most focused. For instance, the Apostle Paul almost single-handedly spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. His secret was a focused life. He said, I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. If if you want your life to have impact, focus it. Stop dabbling. Stop trying to do it all. Do less. Prune away even good activities and do only that which matters most. Never confuse activity with productivity. You can be busy with our purpose, but what's the point? Paul said, let's keep focus on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. Knowing your purpose motivates your life. Purpose always produces passion. Nothing energized like a clear purpose. On the other hand, passion dissipates when you lack a purpose. Just getting out of bed becomes a major chore. It is usually meaning less work not overwork that wears us down saps our strength and robs our joy george bernard so wrote this is the true joy of life the being used of for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one being a force of nature instead of a favorite selfish little clot of ailments and grievance complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy knowing your purpose prepares for your eternity many people spend their lives trying to create a lasting legacy on earth they want to be remembered when they are gone yet what ultimately matters most will not be what others say about your life but what god says what people fail to realize is that all achievements are eventually surpassed records are broken reputations fade and rewards are forgotten in college, James Thompson's goal was to become the school tennis champion. He felt proud when his trophy was permanently placed in the school's trophy cabinet. Years later, someone mailed him that trophy. They had found it in a trash can when the school was remodeled. Jim said, given enough time, all the trophies would be trashed by someone else. Living to create an odd legacy is a short-sighted goal. A uh, wiser use of time is to build an eternal legacy. You are not put on earth to be remembered. You are put on here to prepare for eternity. One day you'll stand before God and he'll do an audit of your life, a final exam before you enter eternity. The Bible says, remember, each of us will stand personally before the judgment of God. Yes, each of us will have to give a personal account to God. Fortunately, God wants us to pass this day, so he has given us the questions in advance. From the Bible, we can surmise that God will ask us two crucial true crucial questions first what did you do with my son jesus christ god won't ask about your religions background or doctrinal views the only thing that all matters did you accept what jesus did for you did you learn to love and trust him jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to father except through me second what did you do with what i gave you what did you do with your life all the gifts talents opportunities energy relationships and resource god gave you did you spend them on yourself or did you use them for the purpose god made you for preparing you for these two questions is the goal of this book the first question will determine where you spend eternity the second question will determine what you do in eternity by the end of this book you'll be ready to answer both questions day three thinking about my purpose point to ponder Living and purpose is the path to peace. Verse to remember, you, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. Isaiah 26, 3. Questions to consider. What would my family and friends say is the driving force of my life? What do I want it to be? Amen.